What's going on everybody? It's Eric Rayweather back here and in today's video I'm gonna be showing you one of the best passing plays in the game. This play is actually really annoying to defend and it's something that you literally can go down the field with this play especially if you're mixing in other plays with it and the run uh, just a really tough play to stop so we're back in the Patriots playbook you know I've said it a bunch of times best playbook in the game this year it's my favorite playbook um, for good reason we're in the gun ace slot offset and the play we want to look at is the double china in now I'm pretty sure that, th that this is in some other playbooks I'm just not sure it might be I would check the Cardinals playbook because I know that they also have this formation this is a good this is a really good formation overall I've broken down some stuff out of it uh, check the Cardinals playbook but definitely the best playbook that it's in is undoubtedly the uh, Patriots playbook so double china in um recommendations for this play is uh, you know having good, two good tight ends is is important typically you want to put your best tight end at the y position which would be Ertz, but it's not a hundred percent necessary i'm not going to do it for the video but if you were if i was in game and i was running this play i would put Ertz there over uh dallas goddard um but the uh adjustments for the play very simple we have two adjustments first we want to take the b receiver golden tate put him on a streak and then we take the X receiver, Jeffrey. We want to, he's already on an in route, but I want him on a shorter in route. So we just put him on a regular in route. It runs just a little bit shorter. Uh, I just like where it falls on the field better when we do that. And that's literally it. I mean, you don't have to do anything else to this play. So the two main things about this play is for, how, how, we gotta have to force our opponent to worry about a couple things. One, if they don't shade underneath at all, if they want to play zone, which most people do, if they don't shade underneath, we literally just throw the running back every time. And you're going to get, you know, five yards pretty consistently against most coverages. You know, your worst case scenario is maybe you get four. It's whatever. This isn't the type of play that's just like, oh, you're throwing 20 yards every play. It's not that kind of play. It's an annoying play. Now, if they shade underneath, that's when we're going to really look to the Y tight end. Although the tight end, even if they don't shade underneath, he can still get open as well, which I'll show you. And then the in route overneath is kind of like our check down. If they're, if they're taking away the two big threats on the outside, then we just check it down. So first and foremost, we'll show it against cover three, which is most people's favorite coverage. And it's just very simple. Like I said, if, if you see that it's open, you throw it, you one cut up the field, boom, six yards. It's annoying. It's very annoying. Like it's not it's not a huge game, but it's it's five six yards. Worst case, you get four four and a half yards, whatever. Again, if it's open, you take it. You're upfield again. That was about six yards. It's annoying. We force them to worry about that. If they don't worry about it, we'll throw it literally every time. Now, also, like I said, let's just say maybe they go over there to use that. Or maybe you just don't like the look of it. Whatever. In route over the middle against cover three wide open. These are two routes that are gonna be very very much so open if your opponent does not shade down and then last but not least we do have the corner route which typically i'm only throwing that if they shade down because if they give me the, the quick running back or the quick in route i'm just taking that every time anyway i'm not waiting for the later route because i don't want to take a chance of getting block shedded or something like that but i just want to show you that you can still hit the corner route over here to the sideline like so he's usually going to beat uh any linebacker especially if you have a good tight end keep in mind jalen smith one of the better coverage linebackers in reg he's very fast got good coverage dallas goddard it's not like amazing or anything he's got decent speed but he's not like a crazy good route runner and he was even able to create that separation there so you see all that now smart people will shade underneath right they're not gonna let you just throw that running back route every play that's good that's what we want them to do shit please shade underneath so we see he's going down underneath now the great thing is even if they shade underneath we can still hit the end route for about five yards that's a good thing because a lot of plays don't have that ability we'll show that again they're shaded underneath which means they're going to play aggressively okay we don't have the running back but we still have the wide receiver underneath he's still going to get underneath that zone and i'm going to show you why on the replay that's one thing about this play that's good because a lot of plays they shade underneath that in route would be taken away but what happens is Jalen Smith still, even though we're shading underneath, he still has to respect Dallas Goddard a little bit. He has to drop back with him a little bit. So does Vander Esch over here. He has to drop back with Ertz at least a little bit before he clamps down. So we can still get the quick underneath in route to Alshon Jeffrey. And you see, we got about eight yards on that, right? But obviously, that's not the best part of the play. If they shade underneath and we see that they're shading underneath, which we know pretty much instantly because we see the flat get attacked to the running back. That's when we go over here. Wide open Dallas Goddard. Just, it's just an annoying play to defend. A very annoying play to defend. Now, also, if they shade underneath, you can hit the Zach Ertz corner out as well, but 
his corner route is not nearly as good as the Y corner route. The Y corner route is, is a good corner route. It cuts at a good angle. It gets open quickly. The Y corner or the, uh, excuse me, the, the A corner route to Ertz is not nearly as good. But if they are going to shade underneath, it is something you can hit, which I want to show you. And, I mean, they're probably the block shit here, but we got it all. You see, you can still get it underneath. It just, it's, a, it's just not as good of a corner route. So, I usually never look to that. That's like my last resort. You know, they'd have to be, you know, doing a lot of crazy adjustments. Like, they'd have to be shaded underneath. Um, you know, they'd have to use her Dallas Goddard and then, you know, somehow maybe, maybe they manned up, you know, Alshon Jeffrey like this or something. And then they're over here using Dallas Goddard. And if all that's taken away, then I would look to Zach Ertz, but that's, you know, the average person you play online is not going to make those type of adjustments. Average person online either sits in regular stock coverage or they try to send a blitz. And if they send a blitz, we have two check downs with the running back and the, and the in route anyway. Now let's go cover two. Same thing. If they're not going to shade down, which in cover two, most people don't shade down in cover two because it just leaves you too vulnerable. They ain't going to shade down. I mean, it's all day. And this actually works really well against cover two, better than it does against cover three, honestly, in this particular play. Because a lot of times, the cloud flat over here, this cornerback, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, but he's going to kind of suck a little bit to the inside to look at Zach Ertz for a little bit. As you're going to see, he kind of sucks inside, and he gives us that outside there. And you see, again, it's easy. You can hit this every time. If they don't shade underneath, you throw that every time. You don't even look anywhere else. It's just that simple. Force them to have to defend the annoying route or keep hitting them with it. Now, again, maybe they're user in that or something, yada, yada, yada. Okay, you still have the end route over the middle. End route's always going to be there, always going to be good money for us over the middle. So, again... Now, the corner route here, the Dallas Goddard, can you hit this if they don't shade down? You can. It's not a pass I recommend throwing. I'm actually going to go ahead and block the running back here just for a little bit extra protection just to show you this route. You can hit it. Um, you're going to have this little window, and, of course, the block shed in practice mode just is always so lovely. I'm just going to go spy to Marcus Lawrence here because he's going to just be relentless. So, again, regular cover two, you can hit this corner route. It's just... It is a little bit of a tight window. You can do it, though, and I just want to show you that you can do it. You're going to have space between the safety and the cornerback, but it is a tight window. It's not a throw that I recommend, but it's not, you know, a throw that necessarily you can't make, right? Now, again, if they play cover two and they want to shade down, if they want to get that kind of risky, which, you know, that, that's another thing I don't recommend. Well, of course, that's taking away the short stuff, but again, then that's just making the corner out wide open, right? So... As you can see, whether they play regular cover or they shade underneath, it's a problem pretty much no matter what um, against zone. Now, against man coverage, man coverage does a decent job uh, against this play. This is a play that I like to go to against people that play predominantly zone, which is the majority of people that play this game. Most people don't play man. Um, you know, there's just much better stuff you can run on people to play man. But, of course, I mean, you do have the in route, which will, you know, if you have a good route runner there, I mean, you can see Byron Jones is one of the better cornerbacks. He gets toasted there. But, again, if you're playing someone that just plays straight up man, there's just way better plays in this game to attack someone that wants to sit in two man under all game. You know, you can run, like, you know, those plays with the crazy crossing routes and just literally dust them for 20 plus yard gains. But most people play zone, so this is something you want to look at. Now, let's talk about cover four really quickly because uh, we don't have a good cover four in that formation, so we'll go over here to dollar. This play also is going to be decent against cover four as well. So, again, double uh, China double in. So, as you can see, got cover four on the field, same setup, streak B, put X on an in route. Again, they're going to give you this, you take it, you get your five to six yards, you make them play underneath, you annoy them with it, and they will start playing underneath. Anybody that's halfway decent will start playing underneath once you annoy them with that route. Again, in route, wide open. These two routes, if they want to stop, they have to shade underneath, but the sucky thing is, even if they do shade underneath, like you saw in previous examples, that in route still gets open a lot of times even with underneath shaded coverage because these deep corner routes still have to be respected at least a little bit. So you see here again, we're playing underneath. We can still get it underneath. He knocked it out that time, sure. But you're always able to get underneath for that five-yard gain, and that's the best they can hope for is like, okay, let's hopefully just knock the ball out, which will happen every once in a while, sure. But that's not something you can make a living on. Again, they shade underneath, corner route wide open. And you would think, well, cover four should defend that better than the, you know, the cover three did because you have four deep zones. Doesn't matter. Wide open. Again, cover four underneath coverage. They want to do that, which, you know, they should eventually do that to stop the easy routes. I mean, they're just giving you this corner route is just nasty. This corner route beats everything. Now, one last thing or well, a couple last things I want to talk about hash marks. So we're in the middle of the field right now, which is ideal. But usually in game, you're going to be in one hash mark or the other. In my opinion, you always want the running back 
running to the wide side of the field. I mean, either way, he, you can, he'll still get him open. But, like, if we're on this hash right here, we'd, we'd, we'd run the formation as is. Because the corner route doesn't need a lot of room to get open, as I'll show you. So, like see here like cover three shade underneath you don't need you don't need a lot of room for the corner route to get open you would think you do but you don't you still like you see the corner route still got plenty of room so you always want the running back running to the to the side of the field with the most room so if we were on the right hash right here we would flip the formation and have the running back going to the left now one last thing I want to talk about in this formation because it's such a good formation you want to mix in the run with this this is a really good running formation the inside zone out of this is very good uh this year especially against the way a lot of people like to play defense with three down linemen you can eat them up easily with this run play so making them have to worry about the run play and also how annoying that pass play is just makes it just makes it worse for your opponent because they have to worry about stopping the run because you it's a two tight end set which means in the running game, you have an advantage against a lot of defenses because normally you might just have, you know, five offensive linemen and a tight end up there, one tight end. But the fact that we have a second tight end, that just gives us a lot more beef up on the uh, line. And you can get up, you know, easily three, four, five yard gains, chew it up. It's it's an annoying way to play. You're chewing up easy little yards on the inside zone and then you're chewing up easy yards by, dink, you know, dinking and dunking down on that flat. And then once you get them aggressive, they're like, all right, I have to get everybody in the box to worry about the run. I got to shade down to worry about the quick passes. Boom, then you hit them with a 20 yard corner out and then they just want to pull their hair out so that's a smart way to play this year um definitely something i've been using in my games lately and it's definitely been working like a charm so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did as always just drop a like comment subscribe and i will see you guys next time